this glistening syrup is going to turn into a white fondant frosting. And here's how it looks when it's on a little cake. And here is the little cake all dressed up. We're doing Petit Four today on The French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated. Whenever you're going to order petit fours, I mean, you usually think you're going to have to order them. You don't usually think that you can make them. But they're, they're, you can make them perfectly well yourself, and they often taste very much better because you put in kirsch and rum and nice things like that. And all the petit, petit, petit four are, are uh, pieces of a great big cake that are cut into small fancy shapes, any shape that you want. And they're covered with a white frosting and they're decorated with flowers or chocolate. And it's this fondant, this white sugar frosting that's the most important part of the petit fours. And so that's what we're going to start out with making today. And you want to have, this has to be sugar boiling. And you want one cup of water and three cups of sugar and three tablespoons of white corn syrup. I'm just using half the recipe on it, but when you do it, you want to use the three cups of sugar, one cup of water, and three tablespoons of white corn syrup. And the reason that you use the corn syrup is because, as in French, they say that it is uh, graisse le fondant. In other words, it makes it somewhat supple so that you, so that you can work it nicely, because that's what ha happens to it after, after it gets boiled. And what we do here is to make a sugar syrup that has to be boiled to the softball stage. And I think a lot of people I talk to just think that boiling sugar is too terribly difficult for words, but it's extremely simple to do. And uh, we've done it several times, and I'm going to do it again so that you won't forget how it works. And the most important thing when you begin is that you make sure before you really begin boiling that all of the sugar is dissolved, which means that, which means that you're going to the liquid is going to be clear and limpid. And you just have to sit and wait until the syrup begins to come to the boil. And then you will notice that rather than this cloudy liquid, you're going to have a nice clear liquid. So you just, you just have to wait. And I think, well, we've done quite a few things with sugar syrup already. We've caramelized a, a mold and we've uh, we've made spun sugar and I can't remember what all we've done but it's uh, you can also make the classic French creme au beurre with it and you'll be amazed to see what happens when when this gets boiled up and gets turned into a fondant it's it's sort of a magical thing now be sure that you don't stir at all that you just shake the pan slightly with your hand. And you see it's now beginning to clear, and it usually, just as soon as it just begins to clear, as boil, then it has cleared up. And as soon as it has cleared, you then put a cover on. And the reason that you're so careful about the not stirring and being sure that the sugar is fully dissolved is that you don't want the sugar to crystallize. And the reason you have the cover on now is that the condensing steam on the top of the cover falls down the sides of the pan and washes any sugar crystals off. And this you can let boil for, oh, two or three minutes. And while this is boiling, I want to show you how to make a decorating cone, because you have to decorate when you make petit four. And this is a piece of just heavy freezer paper, and it's a right angled triangle. And the, here's your right angle, and here's your hypotenuse shades of old school days. And the hypotenuse is about 20 inches long. 
and you mark opposite the right angle with your finger and you take one of the long ends and just fold it up to meet the right angle and then you take the other end and fold it around the back to meet the, to meet the back of the right angle. I'm gonna do that folding once again so you won't forget. Remember, you fold it around the point on the hypotenuse opposite the right angle and take one end and fold it up inside to meet the angle and the other end around the outside. And then you pull these two ends together until you make a tight little point and then just take a common pin and pin it together. Those are very easy to do and extremely convenient. Now I think this is boiled enough and you can uh, use a thermometer. I think the best kind is this long thermometer, the mercury kind. I don't find this dial type is convenient. I think it's probably better for jelly boiling. But I think I don't really trust thermometers very much. I always prefer to use water. And when you see that the bubbles have become quite thick, you're almost at the soft ball stage and take a spoon and drop it into the water, into cold water, and as soon as you can see that it's forming on the bottom, you've almost come to the soft ball stage, which we have, and I'm taking the sugar off. This boils up very, very quickly. So be sure when you're testing it that you remove it from heat. And as soon as you can, lift up a little bit in your finger, see? That just forms in your fingers. You have the soft ball stage, and that is as long as you boil it. And sometimes it takes longer than others, but you're boiling it over high heat. And while you're boiling it, also, if you notice that it seems to be crystallizing, take a little paintbrush and go around the inside of the pan and wash off any cr sugar crystals. And as soon as then you have finished it, you either pour it onto a marble, if you have one, or onto a jelly roll pan. And there it is. And of course, uh, you would have three times as much because, I mean twice as much, because I only did half the recipe. And then this has to cool for just about 10 minutes, and then you begin working it. And the wonderful world of fondant begins. <laughs> it's, it's really magic what happens to it. But you're mu you have to be right there, because you can't let it cool off too much. But you have to let it cool just about the 10 minutes before you begin working it. Now, remember, in the sugar boiling, the, the first thing is that you let the sugar completely dissolve and the liquid is clear and limpid. And then you won't have any trouble in it. And now I'm going to go over to this ready fondant that I have here. And this is cooled off enough so that I can work it. And a little bit is dripping off the end. And this is ready to work when you touch it with your fingers. And it's just barely, it's just barely warm. And also, if you may be able to see that it's wrinkling a little bit. And then it's ready to work. And either take a painter's spatula like this, which you should be able to get in any hardware store, or use the professional pastry scraper. This is a French one, but I think if you look up in the yellow pages, you can look for a pastry supply house, and you can find a great many of these things. And I'm working this on a marble just because it's easy to clean off. But if you want to work it in the jelly roll pan, just brace the end of the pan against, say, a wall and stick uh, oh, like a rubber pad underneath it. And then you can begin working it. And you see, I'm just pushing this back and pulling it forward. And just use both hands. And when you're, I mean, either hand you want. And the easiest way to do it is to stick your elbow into your hip and push with your whole body. And, oh, I've got to wipe my hand off a little bit here. There. Now, you don't never know exactly how long this is going to take to work. Sometimes it, because it's going to turn into a white snow. It's going to look very much like the, like the, uh, 
the covering, I mean, it's going to look exactly like the covering on that T4. Sometimes it takes six or seven minutes, and sometimes it takes, oh, 15 minutes. You just never quite know. Now, look, now, this is beginning to turn. You see, that's whitening. Instead of the syrup, it is now beginning to whiten. And that's the sign that you're waiting for. And you just keep right on working away, and your hands get qu quite sticky. And the, this, the proportions for this, that three cups of sugar and one cup of water and three tablespoons of corn syrup, that's the minimum you want. If you make too little, you're going to find that it just is not going to turn. And the maximum would be uh, six cups of sugar, or, or about two pounds. Because if you have too much, it's going to take too long, too long to cool off and be very difficult indeed to work. And you want to be very sure also that you do not cook your sugar beyond the softball stage. The softball stage on a candy thermometer is 238. Because if you cook it, say, to the hardball stage or the crack, then the fondant is too hard. And, it, and, it, and it's, it gets sort of brittle. Now this, you just keep working it this way until suddenly you find that you can't work it anymore because it has stiffened up and turned into F for fondant. I, th I really think it's, it's such a, a really a fascinating sight. When you're in, if you're in France, you can buy fondant already made. It comes in a can. And the nice thing about it is that once you've made it, you can, it'll keep for, well, almost indefinitely if you just keep it damp. But at this point, you wonder whether anything is ever going to happen to it. Remember one of the first times I was making it, I, I got to this point and nothing happened and I got mad at it. So I went off and did something else. And I came back in about 10 or 15 minutes and it had just, it had turned into this snow all by itself. And if you, if you have your already fondant, you can speed up this process by, after you've worked it for two or three minutes, just put in, work in a little bit of the ready fondant into it and it'll make it turn much faster. That's, that's sort of coming. But it isn't ready until, until it is turned into this snow. That's almost it. I've been saying that's almost it for some time now. But it is almost it. But it's just a matter of it cooling off. Now, as soon as now this is, as soon as you have it so that it's just of the right consistency, you then put it in a bowl and you cover it with cheesecloth so it looks just like this here. So I've covered it with cheesecloth, and you have to let it, you have to let it cure. In other words, you sh it should sit for at least a day. And I don't know, it just, it just, it softens up a little bit and it seems to have more sheen. Now we've almost come to this consistency here. Now you see that has become to, into this snow and I can almost not work it anymore. And the reason it's called fondant, because in French, fondant means to fondre or to melt. And rather than, see, this isn't sugar crystals again at all. This is, what's well, this like eating a fondant candy? 
There, now that is done. And at this point, you would then put it into a bowl and cover it with cheesecloth, just like this. And I'm now gonna wash the sugar off my hand. But isn't that, isn't that fun how that happens? That also is the kind of thing you think you can't do. And now this, some of this I've had, I was surprised to find that fondant would uh, keep for well over a year. I made some last year. I just covered it and kept it wet and put a plastic wrap on top and it was good the next year. And now we have the, have the fondants already so we can ice the cakes. And this is a genoise cake. You could use a sponge cake and it has a buttercream filling in it. And you just cut it into uh, appropriate shapes, such as like these, squares or triangles or diamond shapes. And if you, see if you have the genoise cake, which is not crumbly, you can use it just as it is. But if you have a store-bought cake or a sponge cake like this, I bought some of these, another cake at the supermarket, it was a little bit soft and I found that for icing them, that it was much better to put the apricot glaze on them. And the apricot glaze is just apricot jam forced through a sieve and then boiled down until thick and sticky. And now we're ready to turn this fondant into an icing. And it's tough. I mean, it's not tough, but it's hard to get out. I'm going to put quite a bit in, probably two or three cups, because I want to be sure and have enough so that when I ice them, I'll have enough and you will see why. And now you have to melt the fondant. And you can melt it either with a little bit of water or with a liqueur, such as kirsch, which is rather typical. And then I've got about, say, one or two cups in there, just two or three spoonfuls of kirsch. And then you melt it over moderate heat. And you want to be very careful that it just is barely warm and it's just softened up. If you actually boil it again, it would just turn again into a sugar syrup. If I were, I'd love to know why chemically this all happened, or physically, because it's, it's remarkable. Now, if you wanted to, I'm just going to use a white fondant for this, but if you wanted to use a pink or green or purple, you could just get uh, vegetable coloring and I guess dilute it in a bit of liqueur or water and then and put it in gradually until you just got the color you wanted or you could use very strong coffee, such as instant coffee dissolved in water, or maybe rum, that might be nice. But it's always nice to have a little bit of the liqueur flavoring in. And then you want to stir and stir and stir until it's absolutely the, the, cons the <coughs> an easy cons consistency to, deco to decorate. You'll see what I mean when I start doing it. But you want to be sure and have all the lumps out. And if you have it over too high heat, you can, it can lose its sheen. And that's just about right now. We'll try a, a sampling anyway. Let's see, there's a, a lump or two in, I think that'll That'll be all right. Now, the dipping. I'm going to take one of these first. I'm going to get another tray out here. You take a fork and you just dip it all around in the fountain and then hold the fork up and wait till it has stopped dripping and then to get to get it off you have to take another fork try and be very <gasps> careful if that happens I was going to do that anyway to show you what did happen just take 
pour a little bit over the side. This is going to have decoration anyway, so it isn't too terrible if it's not perfect. Now we'll do another one and hope for the best. See, I'm just have the fork in there and I'm turning it all around. You can see why you don't want too spongy a cake. Now that one, I dipped the fork in too hard, but that's not going to show because the fondant will come back around it. And then on to the platter. Now I'll dip one of these apricot ones. Now this was a store-bought sponge cake, which was so spongy that the apricot helps, helps to hold it together. And I certainly think a, a buttercream filling is, is essential on, on Petit Four. Though some people just don't fill them at all, but I think if you want to be beautifully French, you fill it. Now here I'll dip one more. I found two, but I'm, I'm not a pâtissier, but I find that if you try and make them too small, you have quite a bit of trouble getting them off. Now, that's, those are with the white fondant on. Now we're going to have some with chocolate fondant on. I've got some melted chocolate here in the oven. And I'm just going to put the chocolate right into the, right into the fondant. And this, again, depends on how much chocolate you want in. So I'm just going to put, put it in rather gradually. I think that's probably dark enough. Then if you feel that it's a little bit too thick, you can put in some water or a little bit of rum or kirsch. I'll just put in a little more kirsch. If you have them, if you have the fondant too thick, it just makes too heavy a coat on your, your petit four. And if you have it, but if you have it too thin, you can always uh, re-dip them. I'm just putting a little tiny bit more here. The thing is not to add too much at a time. Yeah, I might have that too hot. And the fondant, after you've, after you've melted it, you can use it again and again. It, not, nothing happens to it. Now, let's see how that goes for dipping. Better take a clean fork. Oh, that's a very nice consistency. I'm going to get a, another fork here. Now, I... I really find that getting them off is the worst thing about it. But I think if one did a great deal, did a great, a great many, one would get one's hand in. Then see if you could always re-dip these. And be very careful getting that off. Now I'll dip one of these apricotted ones. You can take the take the fondant and spoon it over the T fours. I don't think it makes as even a coating though. I'll do that with the next one and we'll see. No, put, I might put on my glasses too, so I can see what's going on. Now this may be a little bit thick. You often have to keep re. I'll turn this around, and we'll just pour this over one. I think for successful pouring over, you have to have it the. Sl side slightly slanting. See, that isn't really quite as neat. But if you had the base wider than the top, I think you'll find it more successful. And this is probably a little bit thick. And then what you should do after, 
before you're going to decorate them. It just depends on what you're going to decorate them with. You might want to let them um, set, which will take a few minutes. Now we're about ready for decoration. And I think I'm going to let these set over on the side here. And I'll use some that I have, which have already, already set a little bit more. Now I have this, uh, we're going to first put some chocolate in one of our cones. And decorate the white ones. You can do all kinds of decorations, you know, when you go to some of these import shops, you can get candied violets and rose petals and things like that, and you can make very pretty decorations that way, but those are very simple. I thought you'd more enjoy seeing the slightly more complicated ones. You can see why this cone is such a good idea. You just cut the end of it off the way you'd like, and then squeeze. And I'll make some with lines like that. And then I'll make another one like this. I like the lines dripping down a little bit. I think they're very pretty. Now we're going to do some with white fondant in to decorate the chocolate ones. I have some more fondant. I hope that's not going to be not going to be too damp, but we'll see. If you want to make the fondants in the T4 and keep them for quite a while, it's a very good idea to put the apricot glaze on because that prevents them from drying out. And then you can keep them in the refrigerator for quite a long time. Now here's the white fondant. That probably could have set just a little bit more. It's a little bit liquid, but I don't know. It's rather nice. Now, I don't pretend to have shown you all about making T4s. I've just shown you the general idea of how to go about it. And the whole point of the rest of it is all practice, practice, practice. And the more you make T4s, the more you and the T4s will improve. And that's a good reason to have lots and lots and lots of tea parties. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Julia Child is co-author of the book Mastering the Art of French Cooking, 